Hare Krishna. I just wanted to say something in, in general before we start with the class. My dear everyone uh, who is participating in, the, in, the, in this experience of the retreat, please know the moment you start intensely practicing spiritual life, it is like deciding to clean a room which was for a long time unattended. Uh, a lot of things will come up. Uh, things from the past, concepts that have hardened over the years. Uh, we may not like people and we we all of a sudden feel, why d did this come? Uh, this is all part of the process. Part of cleaning is that dust comes up. So part of genuine spiritual practice is that, uh, in English you would say, old stuff. Uh, things which we carry with us, who are burden. Uh, but we don't even know that they are burdening us. Uh, they come and uh, Rumi once said very nicely, he said it like this, don't try to look for love, try to look for the walls which you have built against love and tear them down. <laughs> so. So yes, this is the process, uh, uh, and it is all uh, okay. It is all you are on a good track. <laughs> if your mind gets crazy, <laughs> so, so Hare Krishna. Now uh, today we have our third discovery class. Uh, I hope it will be interesting. Let us start. I need my cards. I'm still looking here. Yamuna 
Can I please request uh, those of you, or one of you who has this on the mobile telephone, to give me the mobile, mobile telephone? Mm. Please repeat after me. Vaje drudantya chutaya one moment, I have to find the meter. Kvachit rudantya chuta chintaya kvachit. Kvachit rudantya chuta chintaya kvachit. Dashanti nandanti vadantya lokika. Nritya 
Yanti Gayanti Nanu Shilantyayam. Yanti Gayanti Nanu Shilantyayam. Bhavanti Tushnim Param Etya Nivrita. Bhavanti Tushnim Param Etya Nivrita. Kvachit Rudantyat Shuta Chintaya Kvachit. Shanti Nandanti Vadantya Lokika Shanti Nandanti Vadantya Lokika Nritiyanti Gayantyanu Shilayantyayam Nritiyanti Gayantyanu Shilayantyayam Bhavanti Tushnim Parametya Nirvita You can I request one Vaishnavi please to chant also? requires a short sentence of introduction. It is here in the 11th canto, uh, and uh, the experience of Krishna consciousness will be described in very detailed ways. Um, what it is, is really, in simple words, when one has attained full Krishna consciousness, one will be overwhelmed with love. <coughs> now how this manifests, you will see here. Having achieved love of God, the devotees sometimes cry out loud, absorbed in thought of the infallible Lord. Sometimes they laugh, feel great pleasure, speak out loud to the Lord, dance or sing. Such devotees, having transcended material conditioned life, sometimes even imitate the unborn Supreme by acting out his pastimes. And sometimes, after achieving his personal audience, they remain peaceful and silent. You can see here the Bhakta who has achieved full bhakti in his heart, prema bhakti, um, he goes through a wonderful plethora of transcendental emotions. They are not ex exactly like the emotions of this world, but since we use language uh, that is formed after the uh, after the impressions the world has left on us, uh, we have to. So they laugh, they dance, they feel great pleasure, all are due to love. No, mm, uh, sometimes they even imitate the Lord, uh, and sometimes they will sit somewhere p totally peaceful and silent in meditation. So purport. It's a very amazing purpose. You will, uh, you. But I see that we are getting 
out of oxygen. <laughs> we, we, we unfortunately need to open the windows. I know it's difficult when you sit where the window. You should, you should connect with your compassionate nature. Uh, 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 we, we, it's, it's, it's an absolute requirement when you have so many. Srila Vishwanath Shakavati Thakur has explained the symptoms of love of Godhead. Rudanti means the devotee cries because he think, thinks another day has passed. And still I could not obtain Krishna. Then what will I do? Where will I go? From whom shall I inquire? And who can possibly help me reach Krishna? This is some. Th this feeling is so intense. It would be in our language. We would say, "Another day has passed, and still I could not obtain oxygen." <laughs> <laughs> then what will I do? Where will I go? From whom shall I inquire? And who can possibly help me to reach oxygen? Uh -uh. Or, or Krishna. I'm, I'm not, uh, yes, it sounds humorous, but it's really the similar urgency. The devotee feels so much loving ecstasy that his heart yearns to meet Krishna. And now comes, why does he laugh? Hasanti, this now explains. It is late at night. The sky is dark. And Krishna is determined to steal from the house of one of the elderly gopis. What is Krishna famous for? For stealing? Butter, Butter yes. He's hiding underneath a tree in the corner of the courtyard belonging to one of the cowherd men. Although Krishna thinks that he is completely concealed, he suddenly hears a voice from one of the elderly members of the family. Who are you there? Who are you? I say, who are you? Thus Krishna has been caught. And he begins to flee the courtyard. When this humorous scene is revealed to the devotee, the devotee begins to laugh heartily. <laughs> and the Nandanti, Nandanti is now explained. <coughs> Nandanti, I'm trying to find this for you. <laughs> Can't find it in the moment. When Krishna actually reveals his transcendental form to the devotee, the devotee experiences the highest transcendental bliss. Yes, he, he feels so much bliss due to seeing the Lord. And Vandanti means he prays. The devotee says to the Lord, O oh Krishna, after so many days, I have finally achieved you. So here, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur uh, gives some further explanation of the symptoms of love of God. But uh, some scriptures say it is so uh, transcendental and beyond everything that only someone who has experienced it can fully understand. No? What this points to is our theme, one of our themes, uh, to chant the holy name not mechanically, but uh, how? Sneha Samyukta, with affection. In, uh, in, in the Vaishnava tradition, as you know, there are these ancient works which have been, uh, to some part, seen by rishis, by great saints in their hearts, or th uh, and they are passed down in a 
unbroken chain of uh, uh, master to student. And uh, many of the texts are uh, explained by great uh, saints. One of them is Jiva Goswami, an amazing Acharya who, who said there are two types of chanting. Kevala, without affection, Kevala means just, just only, and then Sneha Samyukta, with affection. The first type keeps the person out of trouble, <laughs> from, from going to a bad situation in life, and the second gives closeness to the Lord. And a little later he says, when the Lord sees that someone chants with affection, he gives his affection to that person. And when that person chants with longing while uttering the Lord's name with affection, then the Lord desires to take that devotee into his transcendental abode. Beautiful, no? <coughs> Should I repeat it for you? <laughs> yeah. When the Lord sees that someone chants with Sneha, he gives his affection to that person. And when that person chants with longing, longing, we had this yesterday, longing for the relationship to unfold, uh, while he utters the Lord's name with affection, then the Lord desires to take that devotee into his abode. Beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, explanation. What this points to is that chanting is really an ecstatic, uh, uh, loving uh, uh, activity. It... Uh, uh, Srila Prabhupada, who all initiated us into this, uh, this ancient tradition of chanting Japa and Kirtan, once said something in Mayapur, you know, in, uh, that is our ashram at the banks of the Ganga. It was in 73, and anyone who heard this lecture can never forget it. This is a, a passage from it. No. Simply, if you are engaged in Krishna's service, Priti Purvakam, with love, it is not hackneyed. Again, I turn to our professor, C.P. Can you say hackneyed in, in an easy, easy word? <coughs> Super f commonplace. Trite. Yeah. Trite. My yeah. Commonplace. Be much better of yeah. <laughs> Ordinary, not very interesting. Yeah. So you should not chant hackneyed, ordinary. <laughs> hackneyed. This the sound of the word should say everything. <laughs> Some things are difficult. So uh, uh, he imitates this now. Here is now my duty. I have to chant. All right, let me do it. And then he, he goes into... <laughs> Not like that. With pretty, with love. Chant every name. Hare Krishna. Hare. <laughs> Getting enthusiastic. And here. Here is Krishna. Here is Radharani, that kind of chanting, uh, qu quality, not, <laughs> not like that, pretty. And then he quotes, uh, uh, quotes something from the Gita. Tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam pretty purvakam. That pretty, that love is required. That is the essential quality. <laughs>
<laughs> Beautiful, no? This is how a lover of God speaks. A God intoxicated personality. Hmm. We have examples of this. One very nice example is uh, Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, who describes his realization when he, he chants. It's from a work, Anuraga Vali. It means the, the creeper. Creeper is, are these plants which grow up the trees. The creeper of Anuraga. Anuraga means deep affection. So this is what he expresses. I think you will have the text here. Uh, oh, Bhagavan. What means the word Bhagavan in relationship to, to how Krishna feels towards the chanter? Loving Lord, no? Oh, oh Bhagavan. Kindly grant me a hundred million bodies at once. It means at the same time. Wow. A hundred million. For what does he need a hundred million bodies? In each of these bodies, grant me a hundred million mouths. And in each of those mouths, grant me a hundred million tongues. But on each of those tongues, let a hundred million qualities of yours perform a wonderful dance. <laughs> I mean, if you read the entire poem, I, I, we don't have time here to do this. It is, it is really exp the expression of, of ecstasy. Give me hundred million bodies, and in each of these bodies, hundred million mouths, and in each of these mouths, ten million tongues. Oh, Master, may your ten million qualities dance on these tongues. That's another translation. What is the use if I don't have a hundred million bodies? We think, I mean, one body is enough. You know? <laughs> Whoa, imagine I have to go a hundred million times in the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can't imagine such things. But if you are love in love, you can't have enough. Have you ever seen a hungry man eating? <laughs> He's fully into it. He's fully absorbed. Hmm. Have you ever seen a person in love loving? He is absorbed in what he does. He, he, and he will not say, it's boring, it's enough, you know, no. <laughs> this word will not come from his mouth. So this is, uh, this is the state of ecstatic Krishna consciousness. It's something, Hare Krishna. It's something which is, uh, a preview, and don't worry, we won't stay in the ideal. We will say, what is the path which can bring us closer to this? My dear devotees, millions of fire sacrifices, millions of yoga asanas, millions of undisturbed meditations, and yagyas and pujas will not satisfy the Lord uh, uh, because this does not make him really eager to receive the offering. Uh, Krishna doesn't have any need of anything of this world, any gift or offering of this world. He will only uh, receive love. That's what he is hungry for. There's a very interesting verse which I would like to chant with you. It is composed by Srila Ramananda Roy and found in the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, which tells us uh, how the Lord, what the Lord appreciates. 
nano pachara krita pujam ata bando please nano pachara krita pujam ata bando prem mai prem nai vabakta hridayam suka vidrutam syad prem mai vabakta hridayam suka vidrutam syad yavat chud asti jathare jarata pipasa yavat chud asti jathare jarata pipasa tavat sukaya bhavato nanubaksya pe tavat sukaya bhavato nanubaksya pe this attempts to describe the heart of Krishna. Listen, it's really nice. The heart of Krishna, who is the friend of all distressed persons, melts in bliss only when there is genuine prema in the hearts of his devotees, not simply by elaborate worship with various paraphernalia. And then an analogy is uh, given that explains why um, uh, Krishna can only find pleasure when something is offered with love. Here is, it says, food and drinks appear pleasing to an individual only to the degree that they are hungry or thirsty. <coughs> we are reminded of Krishna's visit in Hastinapur. He had been invited uh, to negotiate peace, uh, to try to negotiate peace uh, uh, before, uh, and his, his mission in some sense uh, was not heard because there was the other party was not ready to make peace. So he came as a almost as a diplomatic en envoy in that role. Mm, he knew that uh, Duryodhana, who would receive him, who was the leader of the, the party with whom the discussion had to be made, had, made, had, 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 had fr freed the most opulent palace uh, of one of his brothers, Dushasan. It was a large palace with marble halls. Uh, he had f cleaned all this out to, in, uh, to, uh, to give Krishna a huge banquet. The best cooks of the country had prepared this banquet. But when Krishna arrived in Hastinapur, he uh, directed his chariot to a very simple poor house of Vidura and ate a very simple meal of bananas there. The next morning he came into your, to the huge palace which had been established for his pleasure and Duryodhana said, um, <coughs> uh, Vasudev, he addressed him with one of his many names, where were you last night? All the kings of the world were here expecting you for the banquet and it was made for you only. But you didn't appear. Uh, are you impolite, perhaps? <laughs> so Krishna said, oh, listen, do Yorana, for someone to eat, he has to be hungry. But I have a transcendent body made from sat, eternity, chit, and ananda. I don't experience <coughs> any hunger like people in a material body. I was not hungry for your food. There is a second condition when even a person who is not hungry will eat. 
And that is when the person who offers him food has love in the heart. But do you do not, you don't love me? <laughs> so, therefore I could, could not come. I feel your food like poison. And the seed which you offer me uh, spiked with needles. I have no attraction to your palace and your food. Let us have peace talks. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who don't know Du Yodana will think this is rather harsh. He deserves much more. <laughs> he is so such a rascal. I mean, such a torture and such a tyrant. Such a. Let's think a little bit about it. When you come home to your mother or father, uh, family, you know, and you have really eaten a lot on the on the uh, on the journey, you stopped somewhere, you um, ate, um, you, you're full, and now the mother is there and says, I have cooked something for you. Your favorite dish, strawberries with cream. <laughs> and you feel, ah, I'm so full. I, I, this doesn't give me any, uh, any uh, appetite. But but you look in the eyes of your mother and there's so much love. She has made strawberries with cream. And perhaps your favorite brand of bread, you know. You would say, okay, okay, yes, yes. Uh, oh, so nice, how did you know? And um, you will eat and you, uh, what you eat here is love. So Krishna doesn't have a need for anything material, not even uh, incense and, and ghee lamps and, and sacrifices and postures and so on. No, but he accepts the love of his devotees. So this verse says this. He is not, what is it? He is not interested in elaborate worship with various paraphernalia. He is interested in the love in the hearts of his devotees. Beautiful. And this we have to remember when we sit uh, down to chant. Now let's talk about love. Some of you will, will, will blush in a moment. What to do? Mm. What exactly is, let us speak about one aspect of love, uh, raga or affection. It is, uh, Jiva Goswami describes as, uh, it, it as something that we all know. It's an innate, deep attachment. It is never forced. It is absolutely natural. And innate means it's inside. Let us give you the example, an innocent example. Uh, here in Radhadesh are most probably the best buns you can eat. Buns is, uh, you know, a, a type of cookie. There's chocolate or marzipan inside, as you wish. Mm -mm. Now, when you enter the bakery's shop, I know today is Ecadesi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> those who, who, who are monks, they don't eat uh, grains on this day. Uh, and. Uh, and you smell the smell of these Belgium, France, Netherlands informed buns. <laughs> there is an, the, 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 the natural attraction which is there in you is, is coming out and you go like, give me those buns. <laughs> I don't care for the price. Uh, I must eat. Uh, uh. Try it tomorrow, you know. I, I hope the baker uh, uh, has months tomorrow for, for you, all of you. <laughs> it is not forced. You don't have to read in a holy scripture about <laughs> the absolute attractiveness of buns. It is coming automatically. Uh, 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 
So a devotee who is purifying his heart <coughs> will feel that same attraction which you feel for objects of this world, raga, um, and mm, he feels that same attraction to Krishna. It's a redirected attraction. It's, it, is, it is natural, it is spontaneous, it is uh, innate. Sometimes people ask, I don't, I cannot relate to Krishna. Yes, that's because you, you don't know him. Most probably many of you could not relate to buns. Uh, you know, what is a bun? Bugs Bunny uh, was uh, in, in our childhood. We had Bugs Bunny. But this is different. This is a bun. Uh, 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 so, we, we don't... Uh, but once you come in contact, really in contact with the original Belgium, Netherlands, French bun, it, it comes out and you go like, you saliva, I don't want to describe all the symptoms, but you, everything comes, your digestive juices go and you, you go like, I'm stomach, and uh, it's, it's, and it's natural. In, in the Yoga Sara Stavatika, I found this uh, just uh, before coming here, Jiva Goswami describes this in relationship to, the, uh, to boys and girls. You know, when a boy becomes mature, then he becomes attracted to a beautiful girl. And also when the girl, <coughs> when girls are naturally maturing, uh, when they see a, a sympathetic person, they feel, oh, oh, let me look in this direction. It is a quite interesting person. And it is natural. It is, no one is there and tells them, look in this direction now, boy and girl, no. So Jiva Goswami uses this example. We have it for you in Sanskrit. Yuvatinam yatayuni Yuvatinam yatayuni Yunam cha yuvato yata Yunam cha yuvato yata Mano biramate tatva Mano biramate tatva Mano biramatam tvayi Just as the minds of young girls are attracted to boys, and the minds of boys are attracted to girls, may my mind take pleasure in you. Who of you knows a little bit about Sufi literature? Little. You often find the Sufis, the mystics of uh, Islam, using this language, uh, where they say, uh, where, where they, for instance, describe a seemingly material object um, like liquor, alcohol, but they think it's in in relation to to God. For instance, I will say a typ typical Sufi poem. I was on my way to the Koran school, Koran, Koran, the, the scripture, and I came by a tavern. Tavern means like a guest house where alcohol is served. And I entered the tavern and stayed all night at the, uh, the guest at the the host, guest, the person behind the the bartender. the bartender, the bartender gave me one glass after another. Then in the morning, I stumbled out of the uh, uh, tavern, and I wanted to continue to go to the Koran school, but I lost my way. Then a policeman caught me and asked, 
what are you doing here? And I smiled and laughed at him and said, you know, he's drunken. If I would know it, I could give you an answer. <laughs> <laughs> what this means is, I was going to organize the religion, Goran school. But then I found those people who were drinking from the cup of love. And the bartender, this is the spurter master, the peer, peer, <laughs> was putting one glass after another in my, in my cup, you know, I, uh, and I drank. And then I came out and I meet, met the garden, guardians of organized religion policy. They asked me, what, are you, what is your status? <laughs> and I just laughed at them. Now this does not mean that the Sufis, they don't drink alcohol. They will give other descriptions how they fa fall in love. And it's not ordinary sexuality, but it is love uh, to, to God. A higher experience, because the raga, the affection which is inborn, is after some time, as we go through a genuine spiritual path, it is a purified. How does this purification happen? The main principle of raga filled bhakti, it is known as raga nuga bhakti, is that you follow the love examples of the spiritual word, you have a desire to relate to Krishna in the way they uh, relate to Krishna. No? I will say this much, uh, this desire, this intense desire is there in your heart and if you s have hear about Krishna and the, his loving devotees like Yashoda, uh, Nanda Maharaj, Sudam, Saka, Lalita, Vishaka. If you hear this and you hear about the exchange of love, you say, I want to have this. I want to also bathe in this love. Mm. And that uh, love will give you great pleasure. Uh, we have a verse for you. Uh, which shows you another how a loving person acts. Kadaham Yamunati De Kadaham Yamunati De Namani Tavakirtayan Namani Tavakirtayan Udbas Papundari Kaksha Chayeshyami Tandavam Chayeshyami Tandavam O Lotus-Eyed Lord Pundarikaksha Lotus-Eyed Lord When will I dance on the bank of the Yamuna and roll in the sand with tears of love in my eyes while I sing your holy names. This type of desire for the Lord is uh, expressed in the Vaishnava tradition, chant with love. And we will sing one of these songs. Our Yogi Raj will uh, uh, sing this uh, for us. Uh, do we have the text for everyone? It shows you how a devotee uh, wants to change the dimension of his interest and wants to uh, 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 have love uh, for, for the Lord as he chants. <coughs> yes, it is there. They can see. Go down, 
yane babeni ra Tamada 
time everyone's together Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Thank you so much such wonderful singing which which captured a little bit the mood of this song uh, uh, it's it says here uh, I, I will read uh, when will that opportune moment come opportune it's an opportunity it's a when will this opportune moment moment come to us when there will be shivering of love as soon as we chant Lord Gauranga's name and then after this Hari Hari Bolite Nayane Bhavinira while chanting Hare Krishna there will be tears in the eyes it's not tears of sadness there are different types of tears and these are tears of ecstatic uh, loving happiness no? And uh, it's a very interesting how he says, at the moment I'm invested in this material uh, world and material things, and I, I uh, and, uh, try to enjoy uh, material sense objects. And please, uh, Nityananda, by your mercy, it will be possible for me to give up this vishaya, this is this. 
the name Vish is in there. Vish means poison. <laughs> I will give this up. Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. So naturally, we will ask ourselves, how will I reach there? Uh, good. Uh, how will I reach there? What can I do? It's a transformation of desires. It's the transformation of our affection. Of course, while we are in this world, Prabhupada says very nicely, uh, uh, of course, as long as we have bodies, we have to accept so many material things. See, that is normal. Mm. Uh, but not in the spirit of enjoyment, but only to keep body and soul together. No, it is. The devotee uses his body as a vehicle and his material experience as a learning opportunity to move forward. But he has a high goal, an extraordinary goal for a life less ordinary. Mm, yes. So what can be done to bring our affection to the the more mature state. Uh, I want to just say four points in the end. One thing it might come as a surprise is to chant in a holy place, a holy dawn. Mm. Some of you have come to me and said, the atmosphere in Radhadish is so conducive for doing such a retreat as we've done. Yes. Because here is regular spiritual activity going on, worship is going on. You know, it's an elaborate worship. You times a day, uh, food is offered and pujas and artics starts early in the morning and stops in the evening, mm, and so on. Uh, it said one should congregate congregationally, that means together, chant the holy name of the Lord while residing in Vindavan, no, in, a, in a holy place. Some of us uh, uh, like Vindavan very much. And they have seen, when they are in the atmosphere of Vindavan, and they're little careful, Vindavan now has become a big, bigger town, they are also distractions available, but if they are little, only a little careful, the Vindavan atmosphere is like a breeze, a, a strong breeze of wind that, that helps you to fly very nicely. It, anyone can feel that. You feel it especially when you leave Vindavan. You feel like at a certain time, pull up. I'm again in the material world called Daily Airport. Uh, <laughs> it, it, you, you can feel it so viscerally, viscerally, so acutely. Uh, and you know, where was I? Was, I was in a totally different atmosphere. So that enhances our spiritual practice. Therefore, pilgrimages are highly recommended to be done. No? Uh, and the Hari Bhakti Vilas describes how a pilgrim uh, spends his time in the Holy Dham. His body is surrendered, he takes shelter at the place where Krishna uh, had his pastimes, and he prays to the Lord, if you want, you can say it after me, My Lord, I am yours. My Lord, I am yours. Yes, now I will continue alone. Understanding this within his mind, he enjoys spiritual bliss. This is the experience of it, being in the Holy Dham. You, anyone, even a newcomer who came out of the taxi and just stepped into a pile of cow dung and <laughs> thinks, oh my God, the cloth shoes are ruined. Um, uh, after an hour, he will feel spiritual bliss. Uh, you know, anyone, even an absolute a newcomer, when he comes to the place <laughs> near the Jamuna, he will feel these uh, feelings of ecstatic bliss. <laughs> Radhanath Maharaj once shared this with me, his, his parents from America. America. 
very highly elevated <laughs> um, comfort standard. No, he came and uh, and the moment his mother his mother was an accomplished dancer amongst many other things. Uh, she stepped out of the car, and you know in America you don't think when you step out of the car that you will you might enter into a cow. Cow uh, production, you know. <laughs> you just don't think of this. It's not in your mind. You just uh, normally, carelessly, enthusiastically step out of your car. So she went right into it. Wow. <laughs> What's that? Oh, oh, oh no! And, and they don't think uh, 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 cows are holy, you know. <laughs> It's the most repelling thing for an American to step into this. Repelling or repulsive, I think it's a very... But then she fell in love with Vrindavan. I heard the uh, uh, ta talented uh, talk show host Oprah Winfrey also visited Vrindavan and the temple and totally felt the blissful atmosphere immediately. Yeah. So, uh, but this is when you are, uh, this is how to stay. My Lord, I'm yours. Understanding this in your mind, Yogi Raj, you will enjoy spiritual bliss. Yes. Second thing you could do is read Krishna's pastimes and hear about the love that the devotees exchange with Krishna. It is said that even a stone-hearted person, when he understands the loving dealings, or hears of the loving dealings between Krishna and his <coughs> devotees, will think, wow, this is what I also want. Mm -hmm. When you read transcendental literature, there is the experience of a spota in your heart. I want to give you an example. Could you could just close your eyes for a moment? I'm watching the windows. It's a little open, yes. I will say certain words to you. You must be very alert now and see what is happening. Pizza with caperis, olive oil, and cheese from happy cows. <laughs> Ahimsa cheese, in other words. Some of you might see an image is appearing. Wow, good dough. Wow, I see the cheese, it is melted. Ooh, mm. and the caperis from Sicily. Mm. Mm. You know, a lion roaring in the African savanna. You might now see a lion. Mouth is wide open. Big. Big mane is there. I think you get the idea. When you hear something, the mind produces an image. Now, when you hear about Krishna and the loving dealings, an image will come in your mind if you stop for a moment. Don't just read as a page turner but read with a contemplative mind. And that's very good. That's very recommended. Uh, you must know, when Prabhupada translated this, the Vedic scriptures, he was very fast in uh, getting the Krishna book done. It was one of his very first books, because he wanted his devotees to have an impression, uh, an image of Krishna in their mind so that they uh, relate. The third thing I want to uh, 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 
suggest to you is to do something like meditation. If you, Prabhupada writes about this, if you simply carry Krishna within your heart, always in devotional service, and chant Hare Krishna, wherever you go, you will purify the whole place. Uh, what I want to say is, take, learn the simple art of just centering yourself, so simple, collecting yourself, <coughs> breathing, breathing is the quickest access road to the mind to make it pacified and then bring a spiritual image in the mind. You have seen so much Mickey Mouse and Arnold Schwarzbecker <laughs> and, um, and uh, so on uh, and whoever. Uh, <laughs> uh, but bring Krishna in your mind and you will see something wonderful will happen. I am uh, a little bit challenged. I have so much, I mean, I have given you the points. I wanted to make m a meditation with you, but I will do that before I do my kirtan. I can't do it now because we have a very amazing program. Now, first of all, um, lecture is finished. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> A laughter of relief. <laughs> My God, this German Swami talks and talks. <laughs> Was there a fourth thing we should do? Yeah. Four, four you said thing? there were four things to do and you listed three so far. <laughs> Come to the kitten. <laughs> I, 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 I waited for this. You are a doctor from New York, a very sharp person. <laughs> yes, uh, it will come in the, in the kirta, because we need to teach in practice that. <coughs> you can walk ultimately, only you learn walking by walking. This is a simple fact. Um, what was this lecture all about? The core point was, in all of us there is raga, or affection, or let us say, attraction. It's an innate thing. Innate means inborn. It is there. It, it just like in fire is heat, it's innate in fire. In the same way raga is, uh, 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 is there. This raga, this affection is now placed um, into material things. But they will never satisfy us for the simple reason that we are not material. We are spiritual beings uh, in a material world uh, and the material body. So the process of genuine uh, bhakti is to transfer that raga to spiritual uh, items, processes, uh, like the chanting of Hare Krishna. Um, and if you do this, the same thing that will bind you to material experiences will bind you, or bind is perhaps not the word we will, it will connect you, it will bring you to spiritual experiences. It's a very simple point, but uh, if you pay a little attention to this point, you will uh, see miracles unfolding. You might, ev you might, uh, you will also dis uh, eventually discover uh, a path which is focused on, on this uh, very much. I very much feel uh, that Prabhupada taught us Simply love Krishna. He will not disappoint you. He will also not die like a d lover in this world. No? He, w he was speaking about directing our affection to, to Krishna. Hmm? So, my dear everyone, I would love to now take questions and answers. I would like, like to elaborate on the point. I can't because 
we have something very wonderful waiting for you. Today is your Kirtan day. It means no workshop. Uh, it means uh, 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 chanting for eight hours. But we have made it very simple. We chant four hours in the morning. <coughs> then there is a pause mm, of eating, relaxing, um, walking, talking, whatever you wish. And then there is a second part of eight hours. The first part starts already at <coughs> 10 o'clock. Yeah. And that's why we allow a little in a hurry. Uh, for this, I request you to be there. I uh, strongly request you to be there, in fact, because we have a surprise, and the nature of surprises is we can't talk, tell them. <laughs> uh, so, so, but it will be very good for you. It will be very... It will be, you won't like to miss it and see it later on, on the Instagram or in the, on, on, on some social media, uh, you know. It is possibly a surprise that will go viral. Viral? <laughs> viral? <laughs> viral. So, so you want to be there. Uh, 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 I cannot say more. Just trust me a little and you will see a miracle. <laughs> Wishing you a wonderful day. See you at 10 o'clock and Hare Krishna. Thank you.